All right. Everyone should have their nationality that's on this line by now. If not, please contact us in order to get it done. For those that have had their nationality done, then the next step is basically redemption because now you have created a difference distinguished between grantor and grantee. For with a nationality, you are no longer property as compared to Negro, Black, and colored people, persons, they are property. Based on the 14th Amendment, they are property. However, you, your indigenous appellation, which is not backed by a birth certificate, which is a bond, or you have a live claim birth baptismal record, and baptismal is not just Christianity. Baptismal is ancient Egyptian, Kemetic, Temerian. That is where that particular tradition, ritual, stems from. As all world religions stem from ancient Egypt. And the ancient Egypt from Atlantis. And Atlantis from Lemuria. <clears throat> so you must have a nationality to create a distinction. You can't be Lawrence McGettacuddy and Lawrence McGettacuddy on your UCC1 financial statement or the contracts that go along with the UCC. This is what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, I'll tell you what stage. Yeah, I'll tell you what stage. So, we will get into Your nationality, the reason why you have done your nationality, because it's quite simple, because you never had a nationality to begin with. Negro, black, and colored never been a nationality and never will be a nationality for their adjectives. They describe a thing. They're not the thing. It's a description of a thing, but not the thing, not the person. Remember, it's person, place, and thing, which is a noun. Person, place, or thing is the noun. Negro, black, and colored are adjectives. A description of a thing, person, or place. But is not a person, thing, or place. That's the purpose of nationality. Hold on for a minute. Is Fahim El you... Bay? Yeah, I tell you what's to each. Oh, I tell you what's to each. How you doing, God? All right. So nationality is the purpose of distinguishing you from the straw man. The name in all caps, which is I'm on the phone. All right. Which I'm is talk, I'm talking to you from the line phone. Okay, which is on a birth certificate, which is a bond. And everything that stems in commerce in this society is predicated upon that birth certificate, that name in all caps, which you have not made a distinction from. Therefore, Anything in which that happens with that name on that bond, you will have to suffer the consequences for because you never made a distinction. You never, you, you gave them 
full jurisdiction in order to adjudicate in any matter concerning the name in all caps, the straw man, the homeo stromos, the dummy, the tool, the buffer. That is the problem. Stop listening to morals who don't know contract law. Don't know human rights laws. These Negroes are still stuck in civil rights law. Negroes are still stuck that they are 14th Amendment citizens, that they are already citizens. And how can you be a citizen based on the 14th Amendment when the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified? For those that know. And because people don't know, you can utilize it. But I wouldn't go bananas with that. My teacher, Crown Prince Hutan Tupac Bey, formerly known as Ramesses, Prince Ramesses Abel Bey, told me personally that you can jump back and forth as you need to with your nationality and your slave name. He didn't want us utilizing um, commerce. However, in this society, we have to use commerce. I've had too many famous people to come to me and they don't know how to operate with just their nationality because their nationality for some has never been put on the public record so how can you operate you never gave them notice that you have done something in opposition to the fraud that's been placed on you at birth that's a serious problem so the first thing is get your nationality documents on the public record. If you cannot do that in your area, send them, send them back to us. It is $256 fee for doing so, and we can put your documents on the public record and send them back out to you as a true original copy This is necessary. Once again, so you can distinguish yourself from the fraud that's been placed on you, which is the name in all caps, which is a straw man, homeo stromo, stromius homo, as it is called, excuse me, as well as dummy, tool, negro, colored, black. All of these are labels, artificial labels, that makes you artificial person which makes you an artificial person. And according to Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition, an artificial person is what? Someone pull out the Black's Law Dictionary for me and read artificial person. This is why they're able to do what they're doing, making us AIs, artificial intelligence. Because basically everyone is artificial person, whether they Negro, black, colored, white, red, yellow, brown, whatever crayon color that you want to be next, niggas. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what I <laughs> These guys. Hey, I'll tell you what I Did you need that definition, artificial persons? It, yes, please. Give it to me. Persons created and right. devised. Okay, persons created and devised by human laws for the purposes of society and government, as distinguished from natural persons. Corporations. Right. Mm -hmm. Corporations are examples of artificial persons. Mm. Well, well, well. So, to have you as Negro, Blacks, and Colored. That is very beneficial to those who 
was not devised, as you see, it was the laws were not devised by God's law. It wasn't God's law or God that did that. It was human, or in this case, mankind, that did that to us. So when they say that, oh, you act like you're above the law, what the fuck ain't none of your shit law? It's not natural law because it says right there that it's opposite to natural person, which is under natural law. The shit they have, which is legalities, legalese, legal, which legal is not necessarily law. And in this case, it isn't. So they have this as artificial persons. At least they did for those who do not have a nationality. And people have not come to this understanding as of yet. It's still scratching in the dark. And this is a shame, as everyone always say. Well, man, this is man, this is past twenty twenty. Shit, your vision should be open now. Twenty twenty vision. Well, goddamn it, this is twenty twenty one. Going on twenty twenty two. A month and a half, it will be twenty twenty two. And now people's vision is still blurry. Matter of fact, they still have the cold in their eyes. Some haven't even woken up. Some have woken up and they're at least getting the crust out their corners of the eyes. But their damn eyelashes are still stuck together. You know, like like um, you know, like old girl who did the gorilla glue shit <laughs> earlier this year, and that shit went viral. Cause she put damn gorilla glue in her hair so she can make her hair stay down. Some of us got that gorilla glue on our eyelashes. You can't see clearly. Whatever the case is, is now time in order to get ourselves straight. Because we see where they're moving towards. This is AI. You just seen Facebook change their shit last week to Meta. And for us, Meta means to go beyond. So they're saying they're going beyond Facebook. They're going into the AI. Artificial intelligence, and why not? Majority of the people are classified as artificial persons. You heard a guy just read the definition, but they don't want to understand that they're corporations, that their name in all caps is a corporation. It's called Strumius Homo. You know, but better yeah, I might just have to start calling niggas Skittles. You know, I understand the science of the rainbow, but since it's inverted now, niggas want to taste the rainbow, so I just call them Skittles. President Barack Obama made it so that the cancel culture can control everything. Well, it's time for you to cancel these motherfucking contracts that you have with this culture, which is demonic if you haven't noticed. Very demonic. Trying to take away all your rights. 
your liberty. Now, they can't take away God-given rights. The Constitution itself guaranteed those rights. The life of liberty, happiness, and the pursuit, you know, the pursuit of happiness, life and liberty. Your life, your liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's, that's what the Declaration of Independence, the Declaration spoke of. And that quote is carried on into, not written, but it's carried on into the Constitution for the United States of America, the organic Constitution. So now we understand the reason why we did a nationality. Now we can go into the science of commerce. Because you can't be property trying to own property. You can't be Negro, black, and colored, which is property, listed as property, on the New York Stock Exchange, and expect not to pay taxes. That's what happened with Sherry Jackson. She was a she was a um, IRS. She worked at the IRS, and she calls herself not paying taxes because there's no law stating in the tax law that she has to pay taxes. Well, you property Negro, you never did a nationality. You never stated that you're not property. That's the purpose of a negative overtment. That's the purpose of denial of corporate status. That's the purpose. The denial of corporate status is found in your nationality documents. The denial of corporate status is found in your UCC process, which is also referred to as your asset protection. So now that you are the opposite of an artificial person, the opposite of a corporation, now you can get into what? Your natural law, your natural person. And guess what? It's stated in there that artificial person is the opposite of natural person. But guess what? They don't define what a natural person is in the Black Law Dictionary in the fourth edition. Deluxe. It's not, th it's not there. You don't find it until later on in the seventh edition. And the first word after natural person in definition being defined is indigenous. Mm, 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 mm. So a natural person is indigenous. In your documentation, it speaks of you being indigenous. So we transform you, Dorothy's, back into your home of Kansas, the heartland instead of being in the land of Oz. Because everything that glitters ain't gold, Dorothy. You get it? We're falling for pyrite. <laughs> you know what pyrite is? Shit looks like gold, but it ain't. We're falling for all these goddamn privileges and benefits. But what will it lead you to? Well, it led you, led some, some of our people to this motherfucking jab. <laughs> led them to the jab, the jabby jab. That's, that's what it's led a lot of our people to. But you having a nationality, 
you don't have to participate. You having a vaccine exemption form, religious or medical, you don't have to participate. People say, well, how would I be able to go and travel? Well, if you have a vaccine exemption form, whether it's religious or medical, you should be able to use your form. Especially when it's backed by a nationality, you should be able to use your form. But people don't want to try that way. Negroes telling me they got to travel, so they got to get the jabby jab. Got to travel. And, and niggas ain't even walk around the block, but they got to travel. Niggas can't even run around the block, but they got to travel. And said he say, you ain't even go around the corner. This is most important. We'll be talking about for our lives, for our children's lives, our grandchildren's lives. You gotta get this shit right now. Right now. Otherwise, we're fucked. Without Vaseline. Literally. In every shape, form, and fashion. This is not the time in order to ride the fence, straddle the fence. This is not a straddling time, seriously. They're moving ahead with their mandates. And I, I'm gonna tell you, we got more and more Europeans coming to the store saying that look, we need to be together because they see that uh, they're gonna be able to do this shit alone. All of us gonna have to fight this beast, the so-called Illuminati, global elites. And it's definitely more of us than it is of them. Just that simple. I see that they had uh, 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 they had uh, temporarily halt Biden's uh, uh, COVID nineteen injections, huh? Yeah, they 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 holding it for right now, but. Uh, this motherfucker still got two more years in office. <laughs> uh-huh. And um, he's been pushing it, and he's going to keep pushing it. So since he's pushing it, we better push as hard as we can as to get our shit together. Uh-huh. We got to have a paper trail. So sure do. Right. Sure do, brother. There's, there's no, there's no way around us having, not having a paper trail. You know, we can listen to these jackass moors out here that don't have no documentation talking about they're more. The first thing happened if they got to go to court, the motherfucker gonna get a psychic evaluation and get their ass in jail and prison. So you don't got nothing. Written anywhere saying that you are more because on your birth certificate, nigga, you black, you Negro, you call it where they do that shit at. You my property, boy. Now get your ass up here in the escrow. It's called jail, it's called prison, and you got a warden because your ass is a ward of the state. But that's what they made you when they did the birth certificate. Ward of the state. So if you go to escrow, you meet the straw boss, making your ass the straw man. 
You get it? The warden, ward of the state, straw boss, straw man. They telling you it's in your motherfucking face, as David Chappelle would say. We got to get ourselves right, yo, for real. There's no way around it. Right here, basic steps for redemption. Becoming a security yes, party creditor. How you do that? How do you become a secure party creditor once you have your nationality in place to make the distinction between grantor and grantee? Some of y'all might not know what a grantor is and what a grantee is, but let me tell you, if you are Lawrence McGuddicuddy, the grantor, and your name is in all caps, and then you do Lawrence McGuddicuddy in upper and lower case, then according to Ida Sanam, it sounds the same to me. In other words, you have not made a distinction between Lawrence McGuddicuddy, who is giving something to someone, and he's giving it to Lawrence McGuddicuddy? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't give or grant something to Lawrence McGuddicuddy to Lawrence McGuddicuddy. You got to at least make it look like on paper that the shit is different. So Lawrence McGuddicuddy can give to Mustafa Bay. So Lawrence McGuddicuddy, through his nationality, changed his name, his indigenous appellation, and gathered an indigenous appellation to Mustafa Bay now. Wow. That is beautiful. Now, on paper, on the UCC1 financial statement, now he can grant and give everything that he wants from Lawrence McGuddicuddy to now Mustafa Bay. And Mustafa Bay, as the secure party creditor now, have control over that entity because he is the CEO. He is the president of that corporation, that name in all caps, the corporation of Lawrence McGuddicuddy. Now, in order to help solidify that, you do a SS4 form, which is a what? Foreign 98 Trust. On there, you put Lawrence McGuddicuddy in all caps as the entity in the first box. And by the time you get to the third box, you put, because there's a trade name too, which you can also do the trade name. You can do your indigenous appellation in all caps. That can be the trade name. But over both names is the name in upper and lower case, which is in the third box, fourth box, oh no, fifth box area. It's in there. And now you have control of that entity. You pass it through the IRS and, you know, they give you an EIN number for that entity. Now you can use that instead of your way. Social security number, which you weren't supposed to be giving everybody your social security number anyway. But now the name in all caps, Lawrence McGuddicuddy, now has an EIN number controlled by Mustafa Bay, up in lowercase. Oh, shit. Now you can go and open up a bank account with that and make your name foreign to the jurisdiction of the United States. You took yourself and the name that is on the birth certificate, on the Social Security card, and on the marriage license, in any and everywhere else, passport. And now you have taken it outside the jurisdiction of the United States. And Mustafa Bay controls it all. What did the Rockefeller say? The Rockefeller said, control everything, own nothing. Well, that's dumb. They, they, you know, they can't own anything because really, 
uh, they're not from here. They're not indigenous. They're not natural persons. They'll still, because of their, however, because of their money, they can still do what they do. Um, hold on, y'all. My wife is calling. Got to see what's going on. Greetings, peace. Are you in class? Yes. Okay. Huh? You need? Oh no, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Peace. All right. So, hopefully, this is becoming more clearer as we begin to start allowing people to over, uh, I guess you can say, allowing people to um, move in these particular ways because we've been stagnated purposely not to know this information. So this is why we get into the basic steps for redemption, becoming a secure party creditor. Number one, create security agreement and predate security agreement before UCC1 filing. And you predate it to the age of 18. So when you graduated high school or when you turned 18 years of age, but that's the time that the bond on the stock market matured. And you became worth hundreds of millions of dollars. On the New York Stock Exchange, two, Order a duplicate Social Security card at the Social Security Administration if you don't have a card. And if, you, and if your card doesn't have a capital letter, in other words, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, one of those 12 banking systems throughout the United States, and eight digits on the back, and you need a new card. Now, what we do, if you don't have that, we go in and put our indigenous appellation in all caps on the card because there's no birth certificate in which that is predicated to it. In other words, there's no birth certificate in Mustafa Bay, only Lawrence McGillicuddy, and the name is in all caps. Three, send letters to Social Security Administration and state voters registration. Well, the letter was that you were sent to the Social Security Administration would be what is called an SS5 form. You will redo a new SS5 form. And when they ask you about race or ethnicity, you will add into a SF, S as in Sam, F as in Frank, 181 form. And on both of those forms, the SS5 and the SF181 form, they ask for your race or ethnicity, and you will put white for status, free white person. You can actually put in another box for more, and you can put American Indian. You can make a copy of that and send that to, um, or do a new letter in which that you can send to the state voters registration if you ever registered to vote. If you did in Lawrence McGuddicuddy, then you would send them saying that you no longer will operate as a voter. And let me explain this to you. There's two sciences in voting. You have the collegiate, right? And you have the popular vote. As a state voter registration, you only operate under the popular vote. Do you know that there's actual classes in which that you can take in order to become part of the collegiate voters? They don't tell you about that, do they? 
which is called the college vote, where the Senate or Congress, House of Representatives, they help to assist in the voting of the next president of the said United States of America. Four, file UCC-1 with Secretary of State. Now, this is just a claim of lien. You put your birth state, resident state, Puerto Rico, and any other state in which that you have assets. In other words, where you have domicile. In other words, live. In relation to the debtor, birth certificate, social security account, driver's license, marriage license, and any other license permit, etc. If you was born in a state where they rejected the filing, then file in the state of Washington or in Kentucky, the Southern Regional UCC branch. Then do a informative, um, informative, informative. Informational filing in the state that originally rejected the filing. In other words, go online and file there. If you go to the Secretary of State in any of the so called states, they all accept UCC filings, and you would simply go there and do what is now when you do that at the state, that is what is known as your claim of lien. The actual lien takes place at the county level as a non-UCC filing. Let me say that again. It takes place at the Register of Deeds, a.k.a. County Recorder's Office, is where you will put the actual lien at. Concerning your, the debtor, the birth certificate, Social Security account, driver's license, marriage license, passport, and any other license, permits, etc. that is associated with your name. You will put it in the county where you domicile. That is the actual lien. Now, there's such things as federal liens, too, which you can do in Washington, D.C. Not worrying about that. We're worrying about the liens right there in your county. Do a power of attorney. Now you can write up your own power of attorney or you can get a um, a, t- a power of attorney form from off the website. Okay. In other words, off the internet. And each state have them. Okay. Each state is a 2848 form which you can get from the IRS. Form 2848, power of attorney. This is how it looks. Can you all see the form? Yes. So you can write up your own power of, of attorney or use the power of attorney and declaration of representation or representative. Form 2848. Now, six, stamp copy of birth certificate with accepted for value stamp and fill appropriate fills and sign in blue ink. So, 
you can take a blue stamp. When I first did mines, we did it in red. But you don't want to stop commerce. You want commerce to flow, so you do it in blue. Red is used for indigenous affairs. Blue is used in commerce. And black, we don't use. Because black means that you're dead. Red is living. Blue is commerce. Black is dead. And we ain't talking about skin color in this regard. For any Negro who trying to make some understanding of all of this. We're talking about a pen. Seven. Prepare the charge back process. Prepare the bill of exchange. Prepare the private bond set off. Prepare the civil bond. Those are what you need. You need a cover letter, opening contract, trust account, and how you know the number that you need? Well, you have a red registered mail tag, preferably, that you get from the U.S. Post Service, Postal Service, or USPS. That number that's on the red registered mail tab, and let me show you what the red registered mail tab looks like. So everybody can understand what the hell I'm talking about. The red registered mail tab. You've seen it before, I'm sure. All right, so let's look at it. There is the red register mail tab right there. Can everyone see it? Yes. You get that from the U.S. Post Office. This number is seven seven nine nine one two zero nine 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 eight three four nine. That number becomes your number for the bill of exchange, the charge back, the private bond set off. And these and this particular and these particular bonds Activate and open your UCC trust account. This doesn't mean about opening contract trust account. We call it your UCC trust account. You do a 1040 NR, which is a non-residential alien. 1040 NR. All right. All right. This is what a ten forty N R looks like. U.S. non resident alien income tax return. These are the ways in which that you begin to start making yourself tax exempt. You do true and correct copy of the UCC one. Right? Like what we just talked about. You can't be 
Lawrence McGillicuddy and Lawrence McGillicuddy. Got to make Lawrence McGillicuddy indigenous Appalachian, Mustafa Bay. The Europeans do it that way because they don't have title to the land. And Negroes been following, instead of focusing on nationality, they've been focusing on what? The European sovereign way of doing things. Sovereign. Right. They've been studying and stuck on their shit. And therefore, they're doing it wrong. Doing it wrong. And have done it wrong. And wonder why their processes aren't working. Show you a correct one. Let's show you a correct one. All right, here we go. Now let's check this out. Ahmad Kamal Bay. You see? You see that? Who's the debtor? His name in all caps. His straw man. Christopher Orlando Jules Sr. Who is the debtor again? Christopher Orlando Jules Sr. But who is the secure party? Oh, shit. Ahmed Kamal Bey. You see that? So here, the debtor, Christopher Orlando Jules Sr., or Jules Sr., Christopher Orlando, or Seti Q. By Trust, utilizing in commerce for the benefit of the secure party. The secure party is a three-dimensional living soul, flesh and blood man who is Archetonius, indigenous, and a descendant from the original people of the Katwa Lumbi Turtle Island, Mulan, Atlantis, or Mexico, land of the frogs, Miss Nomert, North America. The secure party secures all rights, titles, interests to all collateral and all received by corporation, government, registrations, or registries, related corporations and pledges represented by the same, but not limited to, Pikmin, Pathetica, Hereditaments, Risks, and the energies and the all caps names of debtors transmitting utilities, which is dummies, as well as any and all derivatives and variations of all names and caps, capital names, in accordance with the UCC 3-401, UCC 3-419, UCC 1-308, this lien is not is chargeable in bankruptcy court. Let me say that again. This lien is not dischargeable. Okay. In bankruptcy court. Third party colluders in trafficking in human cargo in accordance with commercial security agreement. And then you can give the number. Which, once again, is based on when you graduated from high school, 
at the age of or at the age of eighteen. And by the red, wet ink signature of the secured party, so you can put your thumbprint on there or sign or as we say autograph third party interveners or hereby barred from involvement with this transaction. You see? Secure party signature. UCC 1-308, all rights reserved. Now, he did this obviously at the state level. But as you see here, let's blow that up. There you go. Can y'all see now? See better now, right? Right here. Yes, thank you. Better. Huh? Say it again. I was just saying thank you for enlarging it to help. Oh, yes. You're welcome. All right. So right here, a debtor is a transmitting utility. In other words, dummy. The big dummy. That's what, that's what that is. So the name in all caps is the dummy. Now, it says, check only if equitable, all right? And they only want you to hit one box. So if he did it at the county, then it actually would be a non-UCC filing. That would be the actual lien. He didn't check that box. That was the problem. In order to have the actual lien, it must be checked, non-UCC filing, and filed at the Register of Deeds, which is known as the County Recorder's Office. Now, at the state, he, he should have checked agricultural lien, leasey, leaser, cosignee, cosigner, seller, buyer, bailey, bailer, leasingy, leasey, and leasener. He should have marked all of those boxes at the state level. Okay. And the optional filler reference data could have put his name there. I've made Kamal Bay. That could have been right there. You see, nobody is teaching us this information. This is why it's up to me to get our people on the right road. Because I've been doing this for over 20 years. This information, this type of information. Studying the science of contract law. So. Now. Let's go here because I'm going to get back to this part. But now, let's go to attachment A, property list. Everybody can see this? Yes. All right. So all of the property listed in this property list is protected by all terms, conditions, and agreements contained in all the documents recorded herein. So I'm just going to read some of this. Not all of this because this is too long and I don't have all the time. All proceeds from secure party labor from every source, from products, accounts, fixtures, crops, mine heads, well heads, and transmitting utilities, etc. All rent, wages, Earnings, remunerated, and uh, memorated, excuse me, remunerated, and uh, memorations, and income from every source, all land in which debtor has an interest, including the soil itself, all minerals atop and beneath the soil surface, all air rights, all water on or in the soil or land surface, such as a lake or pond, wherein the land, within the land boundaries, 
all real property and all um, documents involving all real property in which debtors has an interest, including a building structure, fixtures, and opportunities situated on or affixed there too, as noted in number three above. So all cottages, cabins, houses, mansions, and buildings on whatever type and whatever location, all banks' accounts, all right, um, all machinery, all boats, yachts, watercraft, all um, air, um, aircraft, gliders, balloons, etc., all um, motor homes, trailers, mobile homes, recreational, uh, recreational. Um, Vehicles, houses, cargo, travel, I mean, it goes on. Hell, even we even put in the livestock. Anything in which that you own, I have a question. that your family own, that your people own, is put inside of this. Yes, what is the question? So... So I have a dog and I also have my son and I put them in my collateral. Um, but I also put them in my security agreement as well. Is that right. correct? Yes. You got it. And this is how you keep these agencies from snatching your children. From snatching your animals. Of course, the best thing is to get them before they process. But now we get into protecting yourself at this level because those assets are yours. That child is yours. That animal is yours. The vehicles, the automobiles, the trucks, cars, whatever you want to refer to it as, uh, let's say will conveyance is yours or computer flash drives so see if see this is the problem if um if you was indigenous <laughs> you wouldn't be able to go through your computer stuff as they been doing to a lot of these politicians but see then again they're not indigenous they're not natural persons <laughs> But as you see, anything, all manuscripts, books, booklets, pamphlets, theses, or treatises, uh, uh, treatments, monographs, stories, written material, libraries, whatever, music, song, all trademarks, registered mark, copyrights, patents, intellectual property, all this is yours. Everything, everything is listed. Everything. All fingerprints, footprints, palm prints, thumbprints, RNA material, DNA material. So you go and if you go through any of these, um, Ancestry.com, AfricanAncestry.com, uh, MyHeritage.com, you send them a copy of this. Showing that, look, all this shit is mine, motherfucker. You sell it, $1 million per each offense or more. So all rights obtained, used, requests, refuse, or authorized the administration of any food, beverage, nutriment, or water, or any substance to be infused or injected into or affected the body by any means whatsoever. Oh, there go your shit against the jabby jab. Because it says you can refuse. They give you $10,000 to get that jab, Eileen. Yeah, but it don't matter. This, my, shit here is one, <laughs> my shit here is $1 million. <laughs> so they can say, they can say 10000 my shit is $1 million. You owe me. <laughs> where, my 90, where is my $90,000 at, niggas? They'll tell you, well, 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 forget it, sir. Forget it. <laughs> they need to. 
Yeah, where's my oh, 900,000? Yeah, my, yeah, my, well, my 999,000 dollars. That's it. Where, where is it at? Where my money at? Yeah. You get that, how, about, how about that quadrillion? That what, an 80 quadrillion? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> but right here, all rights, all rights to marriage and procreated children. And to read, <laughs> educate, train, guide, and spiritually enlighten any such children without any requirements to apply for or obtain any government license permit, certificate, or any vaccination. <laughs> you get that? Or permission of any kind whatsoever. See, oh. this is this is what is known. See, see how we perfected this? This is perfection, god damn it. This is how you do this. All rights are outlined in the Constitution for the United States of America and the Honorable Bill of Rights, which is only the first 10. All that damn uh, 13, 14, 15, 16 shit, throw that shit out the window. <laughs> well, you always got Jesus now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not if you white. <laughs> or in this case, pale. Okay. Yeah. So, right here. So, as you see, this is how we roll. All signatures, all right? All names used in corporations, all intellectual property, all thoughts, belief, worldview, emotion, psychology, and see, they're they going to get to that soon because they're going into this meta. They're going to be able to control now your thoughts, your beliefs, your worldview. They're already trying to do that because you can see they're already doing the cancel culture. David Chappelle is a prime example. But they're also doing what? They are able now to force you and not for you to have freedom of speech. They're now blocking you on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all this bullshit from you not having freedom of speech, which is in the Constitution. Which amendment is it, y'all? Do you, who, which, which amendment is freedom of speech? First. Exactly! <laughs> all signatures and seals. All signature on all applications. All signatures on all applications for all value association with the, even the library card. Shit, every damn thing. All signature on and all value associated with all traffic citation tickets. Parking citation tickets. All values from all court cases and all judgment, past, present, and future. In any court whatsoever. So that means once we have this, we... Get it sealed and signed at the county recorder's office at the state level. So we put a claim of lien, but we put a lien and then also our claim of lien on these documents. Now we can send them to the appropriate agencies and we highlight these areas that they are violated and give a cover letter saying, look, if you don't remove these, um, these uh, uh, areas in which they're associated with the Name in all caps, Lawrence McGillicuddy, it was $1 million per each offense. We will sue you in civil court. Because that's what you sue at, y'all. You don't sue in criminal. And I had to say this because people think that uh, they keep going in criminal. No, you, it's, you sue in civil court. And you can only sue as high as $15,000. If you want more, then you have to go to another court in order to do that. Another story. But here, as you see, you know what I'm saying? We control everything. And in this sense, own everything. <laughs> Unlike Rockefeller saying you own nothing. No, we own in everything because we are the indigenous people on this land. So this is what I was talking about earlier. You can do the 2848 form, um, power of attorney, or either you can do your own power of attorney. It doesn't matter. Because once it goes on the public record, God damn it, you got it. All right? Everybody understand that? 
Yes, yes sir. All right. Here your commercial yes, security do. agreement. Your commercial security agreement. Just remember, just what we made mention of earlier, you had to do a security agreement. Well, let's look at it. Remember, we said security agreement. Here it is. Number one, create security agreement. So, here we go. We created a security agreement, commercial security agreement. And as you see, the number here, uh, the last um, numbers, all right, 85 is actually 1985, the year in which that the individual was 18 years old, all right? But this is a non-negotiable, non-transferable security agreement. Now, I tell you this, you no longer say non-negotiable or non-transferable. We want it negotiable. We want it transferable. All right? This is another story. This is how we updated the information. All right? So, as you see here, his name was Christopher Raymond Sanchez. What is his name now? His indigenous appellation. He's now a secure party creditor and his wife. Quitofo, or Quitofi, Day Bay. Proper persona sejuris. You get it? That's what I'm talking about. This is how you do the shit properly. Nobody is telling you this. They're doing a lot of talking, but no demonstration. Notice that. Not giving you the forms, not telling you how to do this shit. Now you need my help. You can get it. No problem. Because I know the full process. And some of this stuff I'm telling you is not the full process. But I'm giving you as much as I possibly can based on the documents in which that you're looking at. All right? So right here. You continue going, scrolling up, down, whichever one you want to say. So as you see here, print SM signature with wet blue ink. No typing. All right? Because that's commerce. So Christopher Raymond Sanchez should be blue. Now, um, Quitafi, um, Dave Bay can stay red. Okay? This is the indemnity bond, which is also referred to as the affidavit of indemnity clause or agreement. Right here, no all, all men by these presents that Christopher Raymond Sanchez, debtor or indemnitor, um, hereby establishes this indemnity bond in favor of Quitifor, a Quitifi, excuse me, um, Day Bay, secured party and intimity, indemnity in the sum, presence, and future collateral value up to the sum of 100 billion United States silver dollars. Oh. Point nine 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 fine silver or fiat money at per value for the payment of which bond debtor hereby firmly binds its successors, successors, heirs, executors, administrators, doing business as or AKA also known as the third party assigns jointly and severely. All right, so. The indemnity bond, then, blah, 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 that, you place the lien. This agreement constitutes an international commercial lien on all properties of debtor, indemnitor, on behalf and for the benefit of secure party, indemnity, in the amount of 100 billion United States um, silver dollars of 0.999 fine silver. So this is why you have to attach a civil bond certificate to it. This lien will expire at the moment the indemnity expires or when this lien is satisfied by the indemnity. All right. Then you go to a whole harmless and indemnity agreement. This is what we're just talking about. The whole harmless and indemnity agreement. 
remember, no longer do we do non-negotiable. We say now negotiable between the parties. All right? So now, as you see, so security number, also we use um, the birth certificate numbers, which is the state file number as well as also the bond number. All right? So, I have a question for you. Yes, yes. So um, do, at this point, we also use, if I have a naturalization certificate, we also use that in there? Yes. And then I also any, heard some any, people in say... Any number in which, in which that is associated with you. Okay. And your I birth also name, heard... Your slave name, your government name, whatever name that you want to refer to it as. Yes. Okay. And then I also heard people saying that you need two sureties that have already done this process. Is that correct or is that incorrect? Um, the two sureties, one will be sent to Puerto Rico, the other one will be sent to um, Washington, D.C. So... What they're really talking about is just simply a copy um, of the surety and the affidavit of individual surety is the SF28 form. Right? No, the I was SF told that I was told that that you need two people that have already been through this whole process, redemption process, or whatever you want to call it, that have already done the process to be sureties for you for the indemnity bond. Um, no, for individual surety. Um, um, let me do it yourself. For yourself. Um, okay. You so you don't need anybody to vouch for you as a surety, correct? Not, no. No, you don't. Okay. Not to activate your UCC trust account. Okay. However, <clears throat> if you want to do such, you can. Because there's no... Um, per se, anyone telling you not to do so. I won't tell you not to do so. But what I will tell you is that based on the SF Form 28, Affidavit of Individual Surety, you do the surety yourself along with the Optional Form 90 and Optional Form 91. Option Form 90 is a release of real property from a uh, release of lien for real property. Um, af, um, after David, what is known as um, Option Form 91 is release of personal property from escrow. So you have to have those three documents attached to attached to your um, the documents on which that I'm talking to you about right now. Okay, thank you. That was that was very clear. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. <clears throat> and we'll show you what <clears throat> the option of the um standard form twenty eight looks like. Hopefully y'all can see it. In fact, I have a question for you. Yes. What is actually included in the initial filing fee on the website. What do you mean? If we, if we have to file the document or if you have to file it? I don't know because yes. the company is different. Yes, if, you, if, if say you were filing the document. Oh, well, for your nationality, then that would be 256. Okay. So can everyone see the affidavit of individual surety? Yes. All yes. right. So this is how simple this is. All right. The state of, and then of course, where you domicile that. County of, of course, where you domicile that. All right. Sometimes people put the social security number here in the SS dot 
area. I've seen that done. Some don't. Um, right here, I undersigned do, duly, um, been duly sworn, disposed, actually, you know, what we say, we say affirmed, all right? The surety of this bond, a citizen of the United States, full age, legal, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to put all of that, all right? Here, the name, of course, that will be your birth name, slave name, government name, all right? And then type in duration of occupation, all right? Um, you don't have to fill that in necessarily, um, but the name and address of individual surety broker used would be 55 Water Street. Right, 55 Water Street, New York City, New York, 10041. All right, See, this is what I'm telling you. I'm, there's, there's things in which that we do, in which that knocks out um, a whole lot of difficult process here. The home address, name of the home, uh, or address of employer, phone numbers, all of that. You don't necessarily have to do all of that. It's up to you. Um, but then on here, you will put what? The same properties on which that is listed on a lot of the collateral listing, the most important process or the most important of your property, you will list it here in 7, in, in um, 7A, 7B, um, here in 8, and also 9. And then the bond and contract to which this affidavit relates would be your birth certificate, the state file number. All right? Then, of course, you get it notarized and sealed and everything, and you're ready to go. All right? So that's basically how you fill out um, 28 form. All right? And that is the form in which that co correlates and, co and coincides with the documents in which that I'm telling you about right now. All right? So here, negotiable security agreement. Remember, we no longer say non-negotiable. We say negotiable. We give them a way out, all right? And it ain't really a way out. It's a way into what we now determine, all right? So this privately held negotiable security agreement is in hand, cannot be discharged in bankruptcy court or any other court as hold the property is exempt from levy, all right? Secure party, creditor, accept all signatures in accordance with UCC 3-419. Now, what this means is that you can do a Form 56 on each person in which that is involved. Now, what is the Form 56? Let's look at it. All right, it's the IRS form. But what is the form 56? It's notice concerning fiduciary relationship. Notice, let's look at it. All right, so. Form 56. This is notice concerning fiduciary relationship. Whether it's a judge, whether it's CFO, or the President of the United States. You can do a Form 56. Notice concerning fiduciary relationship. All right. As you see here, this is how it's set up. You can utilize it. Just simply fill in the information. It won't take up a lot of time with this, but that's what you would do. So this is right here, secure party credit, accept all signatures in accordance with the UCC 3-419. So this is how you accept those signatures. 
Adjusted adjustment of this recording is from House Joint Resolution 192, Public Law 73-10, and UCC 1-104. All proceedings, accounts, and um, orders therefore therefrom are released to secure party creditor. So this is how you get them to release everything to you. Um, Cause what is the House Joint Resolution 192 about, y'all? About say it again. Taking off the gold and the silver out of circulation and create the right. fiat. Right, particularly the gold, and by nineteen. Um, 72, 73, under um, Richard Nixon, took the gold off, I mean the silver off. So yes, during those 40 years, all right, those 40 years it was taken, the silver and the gold. So that means now you can operate paper for paper. So that's what the House Joint Resolution 192 is about. Operating in commerce paper for paper. Because there's nothing of substance backing the fiat any longer. As a matter of fact, that's why it's called fiat. It's no longer called a certificate. You have um, gold certificate. You have silver certificate. These are actual monies in which that you were able to go to the bank and retrieve gold and silver. The banks no longer operate like that, do they? <laughs> Matter of fact, hell, they're getting the shit more faker and faker. Hell, penny isn't even copper. It's mostly nickel. <laughs> they go to the old pennies. Pennies before 1965, 64, somewhere around there. The pennies before that, those was made from copper. This shit now is made from nickel. Ten. So it's not backed by much of nothing. And that's the problem. So now you have a negotiable international bill of exchange. And remember that registered mail tab number that we called out? That goes right here. That's where the registered mail tab number goes at. And this is the Board of Governors, Federal Reserve Window, Washington, D.C. All right? Now negotiate with the National Bill of Exchange in accordance with the House Joint Resolution 192. Charge back on personal, private, treasury accounts. So you go, so this information is for um, Puerto Rico, and um, you can add that there as, as well as also um, the one in D.C. Charge back, as you see, San Juan, Puerto Rico, All right? But once again, this is the Department of Treasury, Secretary of the Department of Treasury at San Juan, Puerto Rico. However, you can send a copy of your documents from the ones that you sent into Washington, D.C., and CC it to San Juan, Puerto Rico, right? You have actual and constructive notice. You get a notice to the Board of Governors. You give a notice to the um, Secretary of Treasury or the Treasurer in Puerto Rico, San Juan, Puerto Rico. You give a notice to the... Um, Secretary of Treasury in Washington, D.C. All right. This is also com commercial notice appointment of fiduciary creditors and debtors. So the same form which I just showed you, which was the Form 56, this is a form that you can make yourself if you did not have the Form 56, you can do it this way as well, All right? Commercial notice appointment of fiduciary creditor and debtor. Appointment of fiduciary. So here it is, I, um, quarter fee, 
Bay Day, uh, Day Bay, excuse me, third party interest intervener terminates the previous fiduciary to the corporate entity in allegiance. A document vessel under United States registry, otherwise described as Christopher Raymond Sanchez, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. And fiduciary creditor, who you send it to, Office of the Commissioner into um, Internal Revenue Service is hereby authorized to use the private exemption of now quarter fee day bay or Christopher Raymond Sanchez name in all caps with the security no social security number for the adjustment and set off of all presentments. All right. So now you also do unlimited private bond, negotiable unlimited private bond for set off. Okay. Right here, in accordance with public law found in Chapter 48, 48 Statute 112, Public Policy found at House Joint Resolution 192 of June 5, 1933, and Uniform Commercial Code, the principle being the sole authorized acceptor of the said bond contributor of the value thereto and contributor beneficiary thereof. All right? So... As you see here, you got to have a certificate of live birth number. This is the birth certificate number. Here it is what we was talking about, administrative affidavit of Pacific negative avertment. Opportunity to cure and counterclaim. All right? This is to cure and counterclaim. You think they can bypass you? And see, with all of these, um, all of these forms, um, I will. I like to put um, void where possible, or where necessary. Void where necessary. Um, underneath each caption. So right here, underneath counterclaim, I will put void where inhibited, void where necessary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is the counterclaim failure to, as you see here, opportunity to cure. Give 21 calendar days to cure the dishonor and commerce by complying with one of the following. Right, actually, it takes you 30 days once you send this information off to the Secretary of Treasury, copy to um, Puerto Rico. It takes about 30 days before you can begin to start discharging debt, utilizing your UCC trust account, which the number is for the UCC trust account, remember, is the red, is the red mail tab. The red register mail tab number. Okay. So right here, the following damage has been accessed against you if and when you fail to cure your honor in commerce as it is stated in the opportunity to cure contained herein. For you to state a claim upon which relief can be granted $1 million U.S. per count per violation per officer agent, and representative who is involved with this action. It's honor, excuse the typo here, uh, let's get that right, of commerce, in, dishonor in commerce, $1 million per count, et cetera, et cetera. Collusion, $1 million. Theft of funds, $1 million. Racketeering, $1 million. Conspiracy, $1 million. That's the counterclaim to anything in which that they, $1 million. Right, this is a private agreement here, right? He's dealing with a private agreement, all right? And once again, all right, um, up here, you will put the register, red, the red register mail tab number on this bond, okay? Uh, this is the private agreement. Actually, the private agreement can actually go with the security agreement, okay? So. This is the information, y'all, in which that give you the steps. So we continue on. Let's look at it. So now that you have all of that information, all right, make color copies of signature pages and those that have color of your original document before shipping mailing. 
There's also a suggestion that you make a second set of original copies signed in blue ink so that as needed, you can make regular copies and place them under copy certification. Keep all originals in a safe place. All right? So you'll make a copy for yourself, you'll make a copy for San Juan, Puerto Rico, and you're going to make a copy for Secretary of the United States, uh, 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 Treasury. All right? Treasury. So you're going to make it for the Treasurer of San Juan, Puerto Rico, which is for the Federal, um, for the Board of um, Federal Reserve, and you're going to make it for the Secretary of Treasury in Washington, D.C. So you're going to get all this information together, put it in a vanilla envelope, put this red mail tab sticker on it, all right? And make sure you get the numbers for that red metal tab on all your bonds, your bill of exchange, your non-negotiable chargeback, your negotiable chargeback, and your private bond set off. All right? Make sure you get that number on all of them. You can even put it on your civil bond. All right? But whatever the case is, make sure you got that number. All right? Now, that helps to go to... Um, activate your UCC trust account. You're using the civil bond certificate because now in the UCC trust account, now you are putting something in the UCC trust account. And that particular civil bond certificate is worth $100 trillion. At least that's what we make out. So you've seen on here $100 billion. We put $100 trillion. <clears throat> and we asked them to put that into the UCC trust account, into the account. Question, Doctor. Yes. How much is that silver certificate needs to be? Well, how I much? just said it. One hundred trillion dollars. No. How much pieces of silver do you have to make the? Twenty-two. Okay. All right. So you have twenty-two pieces of silver, or twenty to twenty-two. Moore's use twenty-two. Um, okay. But according to the Constitution, it only takes twenty pieces of silver to um to activate a um a court case. Okay, that's according to the Constitution itself. Um, read Article um, um, I think it's Article One, Section Ten. Read, read, read that information. It speaks about it somewhere in there. But Right. This is what it says. In suits at common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved. And no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise reexamined in any court of the United States, then according to the rules of the common law. So this is actually in the Seventh Amendment. All right? The Seventh Amendment, the Bill of Rights, all right? But it says for as far as making money, of course, that's Article 1, Section 10. Um, what is that? Yeah, Article 1, Section 10, where it speaks about um, being able to, um, only Congress have the right in order to um, make money, real money, coinage, that is. All right, so this is the process, y'all. Um, then you'll send to the Secretary of Treasury of the United States, Janet Yellen, via USPS, with the registered mail tab, preferably. Um, some people use FedEx, UPS, or DHL. We don't use that. We just go straight to the post office because the post office itself is a treasure. It's a treasury. All right? It's a treasury. FedEx, UPS, and DHL is in the Treasury. <clears throat> so 
So we go through the register mail tab we get from the post office, and we also send it through the post office. All right. Send to Secretary of Treasury or to the Treasurer of Puerto Rico. San Juan, Puerto Rico, as we just said. I'll write a copy of the same documents. So you put a couple letters to it and you say basically you're CCing this. This has been put in at um, Washington, D.C. at the Secretary of Treasury, and now we're CCing it to you, the Treasurer of um, the Federal Reserve Boys, uh, 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 Puerto Rico, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and um, make sure you tell the, um, the Federal Reserve Boy that um, we're coming for your ass. Okay? So this is the science show. Any questions or anything that I've gone over? I gave you all the steps. Told you the forms. Told you how to do it. What else is there? I got one question. Yes. So do we actually buy, like, 22 pieces of silver and what, yeah. put it on a bond paper or take a picture right. of it or what? Yeah. Take a picture of it and you attach it to the civil bond after David and which that you have created. I'll show you a picture of how that looks. Let's, let's go to it. Yes, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yes. All right, so civil bond. This is an example of how to do a civil bond. The paper in which that you would use is resume paper of the weight of 100. All paper is bonded. Right, some people use 50. Uh, Dr. Eileen. Mm hmm On that SF-28, on line 10 signature, use the indigenous or the government? Nope, the indigenous. And what you can put is your indigenous appellation along with the name. So you would say Mustafa Bay X Real or X Relationship to um, I'm Lawrence McGillicuddy. So can you all see the paper? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, this one here is just 24 pounds. 
but 100% cotton. Okay? If you can use 50 pounds up to 100 pounds resume paper. And that's what you want to put your bonds on. The civil bond in particular too. This is how the civil bond looks. Notice of surety, act, and bond. No all men by these presentment. I, Al Malik, blah, 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 beneficiary, office of um, Tariq Ibn Sales, a um, mistake, a free man, and Aboriginal indigenous inhabitant upon the free soil of the Montauk um, Territory called New York Republic State. And I am not a corporation. I'm a living soul of legal age, competent to testify, have personal hand, first-hand knowledge of the truths and facts herein being truth, correct, and contained, not misleading. All right, so when we do all of that, blah, 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 all right, get it notarized, all right, sealed, notary, and as you see here, the intent of bond under seal is established by my witness um, to good credit in the sum concerning the amount of $21, or in this sense, 22, or 20 to 22. Remember, it says greater number than 20, so 21 or 22 as we do, in silver coinage, which carries no debt obligation worldwide, which carries no debt obligation worldwide, minted by the American Treasury under um, basically of the United States of America, um, which is the Republic, um, lawful species do dollars of the United States of America available to the bond action of the private party listed above and further in reservation of rights under common law and customs of the United States of America available by bond, the action of the private party listed above and further in reservation of rights under common law and custom of the United States of America, original jurisdiction, original rules, have before this assembly of men a bond and tender of 21, as in our case, 22 silver dollars, coinage, act of um, A.D. 1792, bond of identity and character of proof, positive, competent evidence. All right. Um, Malik cannot be bankrupt. In other words, cannot be sued, cannot be um, levied, cannot be leaned. All right? So that's the science of that. All right. Any questions else? Any other questions before we go? Uh, Dr. Eileen. Yes. Them, uh, <clears throat> I had got 24, uh, one Troy ounce, the Buffalo Silver off at Apex. That, that, that'll work. Yep. Oh. As long as you get, as long as you get, um, over 20 pieces of, um, silver, take a picture of it and attach it to the bond that I just showed you, um, uh, basically, and shoot, you ready to roll. You want to put that into the vanilla envelope along with the rest of your documentation that we just went over, and you want to send that off to, the Treasury, whether it's okay, in Puerto Rico or Washington D.C., you want to make sure you get both of them. I have to get that uh, document that's speaking about the silver bond. That's the only one I was that I didn't have that I don't have. I had to get with you on getting it. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah, you got to got to do the full thing. You got to got to be able to put something in into the Treasury if you want to get something out. In order to do um, discharge or set offs, and that's what happens. Most people don't do it. They don't put something in, and yet they expect something um, out. And then they go and try to go send their forms to the CFO of these corporations and to the IRS criminal division and so forth and so on. And next thing you know, uh, they get in bins and uh, 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 they get in all types of cars. You know, I, I got a, I know a brother um, who had a who was, had 11 cars, Maserati, um, uh, uh, Porsche, um, uh, Lamborghini, Bentley, et cetera, et cetera, had 11 of them. And they let them take, take it off. They was going to let them take it off the lot. 
because he utilized his UCC1 financial statement and so forth and so on. However, he never did the full process. He never put nothing in. So how can you expect something out? Another story. All right. I got to go, y'all. All right. How to watch that is she? How to watch that is for Ali. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Thank you, brother. Good brother. All right now. Thank you. Yeah, I think what's the issue?